You know, I have launched a uh, a recall for um, of, um, Mayor Eric Adams of New York. I don't even know if they have recall election re recall possibilities or potentials here in New York. But I, I want to drive home the point. Uh, the uh, a police officer on this past Saturday, about two o'clock in the afternoon, was attending a um, an event up in the um, the house. I think Manhattanville houses. Um, uh, for one of the senior citizens up there, and, and he was off duty at the time. Uh, but when he stepped out the door, there was a hail of gunfire. There were two Hamite brothers shooting, or somebody shooting at each other, I'll call them Hamites. They were shooting a crossfire, the bullets were flying, so the police officer ducked, <laughs> trying to, you know, and he got, he, got, he got shot anyway, got shot in the foot. And I, I think they released him from the hospital. This was this past Saturday. Last week, a police officer on his way to work in Queens uh, was shot by two men who tried to rob him, right? And this weekend, there was a crosstown bus, uptown bus, carrying dozens of passengers, uh, got hit by multiple gunshot, gunfire. So, Mr. Engineer, do you have that, do you have that video? Roll that video of these, this, you know, what happened with this. People are shooting up buses, shooting up police, shooting up senior citizen party. This, the, this is the wild, wild west here in, in, in New York. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm probably being a bit, I don't know, as if it's a comedy, it isn't. Go ahead, Miss roll that clip. This time, someone opens fire and bullets hit an MTA bus in the middle of the day. The gunfire erupted near the busy corner of 125th Street and Lexington Avenue in East Harlem. Thankfully, no one was hurt here, but it certainly was a scary ride for passengers on board. News 4's Adam Harding live at the scene now. And Adam, you just got new surveillance video. And it shows, Gilma, some people running as those bullets went flying. About 15 minutes ago, that bus just pulled out from the scene here in East Harlem. Investigators tonight telling us that there were dozens of people on board the bus. Nobody was struck, but tonight, whoever fired those shots is still on the run. I was like, pop, pop, pop. Surveillance video showing the moment of panic. Some could be seen ducking and running. Police tonight investigating a shooting in East Harlem near Lexington and 124th. I heard like, you know, six or seven shots and everybody just started running. And then, you know, I looked and next thing you heard, uh, I like, you know, like stood behind this bus on the right hand side of Lexington. And it was evident, you know, that the shots were coming from further down Lexington. Tonight, sources say an MTA bus was struck by the gunfire. Dozens were on board. Fortunately, there were no injuries. It's something I worry about, but it's not something you expect. This is the latest act of violence in what's become a troubling trend across the city. Already this year, there are 114 shooting reports, up from 87 last year, according to the latest data from the NYPD. Saturday, an off-duty officer was shot in the foot not far from Sunday scene. Just this week, the president meeting with the mayor and governor in New York City to address the sudden surge. I mean, it's getting really sad out here. That's what I'm saying. I was just really surprised. It's, it's nothing new over here. I mean, it's two fifth and like it's New York. And tonight, Gilma, this statement in from the vice president of the union saying that this is at least the fourth shooting involving an MTA bus in the last six months, saying in part that some bus operators are defenseless, some of them even asking for bulletproof vests. Again, investigators tonight telling us that no arrests have been made, no injuries reported on top of the bus. Gilma police also say a car nearby was shot. The investigation tonight continues. You're going to need more than a bulletproof vest. I can tell you that. You're going to need helmets and everything else. This is really wild. And by the way, this is happening right here in Harlem, as you very well know. I'm on 123rd Street, right? This ha and, and, and Lenox Avenue, that happened on 124th Street and Lexington Avenue, which is three blocks to the west of me. And one block. So we just four blocks from here. It's where that happened. <coughs> Pardon me. I think the other thing that's important about this matter is that you know all these these JFIF people and LGBTQ, along with the pension those Negroes, moved up here to Harlem, uh, and they were going to make it a boudoir. I guess they were going to make it a, a fancy, you know, upscale neighborhood. They have spent millions of dollars buying brownstones. They have been invested billions of dollars um, in building several new high-rise buildings that have gone up in the community over the last 20 years. And millions of dollars they've invested in the restaurant, you know, leisure uh, uh, industry, restaurants all over everywhere. But Harlem hasn't changed. It, 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 the shootings, the crime, you got broad daylight. I think all the, I think all the shooters go home and go to sleep at night. You got broad daylight shootings. 
Last week, at I was a, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, in front of the Apollo Theater, a man was shot to death in broad daylight. Over on El, El Barrio, on the east side again, uh, on 103rd Street, a man was shot to death at 11 o'clock in the morning. I mean, they didn't get, they didn't get a man time to have lunch. A police officer was shot Saturday at a senior citizen party. Another police, and, and this is all here in Harlem. A, a month ago, a car drove up to a bodega on, on Lenox Avenue, about five blocks from here, and four men got out of the, out of the car, and you know, I mean, they all opened fire on men standing on the street. And this, it's going to get worse. The... Um, it, it, what these, when I say white, because I know it gets your attention, I don't mean to be racist or anything. What these white folk thought ain't happening. You say, well, what you talk about, it ain't happening either. Well, it's at a standstill. <laughs> I got a better shot of developing outlaw because they put all this money up here. The politicians, they came up here gra land grabbing like they won't believe, bulldozing over churches, paying off preachers. Jacking people's property through foreclosure. And it ain't happening. It ain't happening. The, it, this ain't becoming no upscale community. It's getting worse. I, but I got a few moments. So I got, let me just say this. I have launched what I now refer to as the Joseph Project. The Joseph Project says that police officers are not going to be able to stop the shootings. Police themselves are now target of the shootings and putting more police on the street, which is what Mayor Eric Adams says he will do to be able to quell all of this violence, it's not gonna do it. It's only gonna create more confrontation and more police shootings, more police, and I don't, I'm not saying I wanna see that happen. Uh, they, there has to be something else. There has to be, you gotta, there's gotta be a thinking out of the box remedy to this problem, and I have it. God's given it to me, the Joseph Project. Get men that have been in prison for at least seven years, um, and who understand the hood, whether they be Japheth, Shemites, or Hamites, put them through, a, uh, let me interview them, and then bring them out of prison. Give them a, a release. Give them a work release. I've got it set up where, you know, you can give them a work release. Let's say, for instance, you can put them here and if you bring them, bring them all down to Sing Sing and take the Sing Sing prisoners up to, I don't know, someplace else, fish killer somewhere, and put, you know, 50 to 70 men on work release. They come out of prison during the day, 6 o'clock in the morning, they can hit the streets and, you know, or they can, and they can work the day shift and then some can come at 6 in the evening and work the night shift, but they'll go back and sleep in the prisons, right? And if they do that and do they keep their nose clean, ultimately they will get a a conditional release, even if they're serving a life sentence. I got a great plan here, but you know, someone said to me, Eric Adams ain't gonna come nowhere near you. That man, he and nobody around him are gonna ever give you an audience. They ain't gonna, even the media, they ain't gonna come near you, man, and they ain't gonna touch you. They don't like you, man, they don't like you. And they're even as wonderful as this plan is, they're not gonna deal with it. They're gonna, they may try to get somebody else to mouth it, but you got your big mouth out, everybody knows your plan now. But they ain't gonna do it. But I wanna ask you to help me. If you know someone that's in prison, right, or if you know family members, let, let, once the pandemic virus cools down, let's have a meeting. Let me call all the family members, the wives, the children, the mamas, the grandmamas, the granddaddies, the daddies. Let's call y'all to the church. You got men in prison here in the state of New York. Let's have a meeting. All right? Let, 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 I'm going to call you to church. Let's have a meeting and whether the powers that be, I think Governor Hochul might talk to me. I know Eric Adams ain't gonna say nothing. Not that <laughs> they will, they will dethrone that boy if he said, "Well, let's call Manning down to City Hall." I don't agree with his politics. I don't agree with his LGBT stance and everything. But he may have a program that can save lives in New York. We don't have to adopt it. We'll call him down to City Hall and just talk with him. Well, first of all, I ain't going to City Hall. You want to talk to me? You got to come up in. See, 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 that's, see, see, that's what we don't like about you, man. <laughs> that's what we don't like about you. You're talking about you wouldn't go to City Hall. No, I won't. 
You want to talk to me, come to the church. In the, in the, in the church on holy ground is if we're going to discuss this with the, with the mayor, which I, I don't, you know he ain't going to do it, but, but Mayor Adams is not going to do it, but Governor Hochul might do it. But you're going to need the cooperation of the city of New York, the mayor of the city of New York, and the governor to get this done. The governor controls the prisons, the mayor controls the city, the police department. But, you know, I'm going to keep talking about it. You spread the word. I want to get, if you, got, if you know people that have no people, no men that are in prison, let's have a meeting sometime in the spring of the year. Uh, once the pandemic is not so bad, let's have a meeting. I'll call all, all of everybody come to the church. And, and we'll talk about this. We can implement this program without Mayor Eric Adams. We don't need him. No, we don't. Now, it would be good to have his help, but I don't think he's going to, I don't, no, I don't think so. And Alvin Bragg, he ain't going to go for it either because they're already, they'll say, Pastor, you, you've been calling for their recall of them and saying all kinds of things about them that have been very untoward over the years. I know, I know, I know. But I think that police officers realize that the morale is low, that they are alive. They, they, I think the wife of Jason Rivera said it best. Said, you know, the, the New York City is not safe anymore. And there's always a risk with being a police officer. Every, everybody who puts on that badge to become one of New York's uh, finest, everybody knows that it's a risky job. But now it is even more risk because, I mean, the reg regular constraints are just removed. Jason Rivera's wife said it best, you know, police officers' lives. And I would want to give a, a shout out to the police officers. You, you're, you're out there on the street, and it doesn't have to be that somebody wants to shoot you, but you got stray bullets flying around everywhere, and you out there on the street in the car constantly. I'm going to ask police officers if y'all will, you know, and maybe you don't want to get in trouble with the mayor, with the, you know, police chief and sit and talk with me since I'm so controversial and everybody here got a thing against me. I ain't for Obama. And I'm not for the LGBTQ. And so everybody hates Manning. But maybe some of you police officers, you know, because I think a lot of them are going to start retiring and just leaving the force. And you're not going to be able to get any young recruits. There's no where you going to go. To, where you going to go? Frederick Douglass High School to ask the young boys if they want to be a police officer. I know you're kidding. I know you're joking. You go down to Martin Luther King Jr. High School and put up a program down and ask them young boys if they want to come and be a police officer. I, I'm saying let's go to the prisons. Not to make the prisoner a police officer. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying he knows the nose. He knows how to talk. He knows what to say to these young boys. They're out there on the street. And, and if this ever gets publicized in the, in the press, that the men are prison out on the street, the young boys have respect for them. They may not respect the police, but they respect these ex con who have been in prison for 15 years, but now he's out on the street trying to talk to the brothers, trying to talk some sense in. Stop shooting, man. And it, not only will it stop shooting, but you can get a whole lot of folk to go back to their families, start their families, get a job. This, could, this, is, this, is a, this Joseph project could save New York City. It could save Chicago, Los Angeles. The problem is, is that I'm a truth teller, and these politicians are afraid to come near me. But if they want to come talk to me, you got to come to the church. You got to come to the outlaw church. I'm not going down to sit down. But I'm going to ask y'all to pray about it. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, let he that have an ear hear what, I, what you have told me. It, it could, it ultimately, these prisoners could be fully free, but they could be on a work release, be out on the street during the day, during the night. The city would give them a salary. The, the, the state would pay them. And uh, I will interview them and go through the process and determine their eligibility, and their sincerity. But we can say, if another police officer gets shot over the next few months and killed or shot, and Mayor Eric Adams and Governor Hochul don't come to me, the blood of that police officer is going to be on their hands because God has sent the answer. God has sent the answer. And if bus drivers or innocent people get shot in a crossfire, 
the blood of those people of these killings will be on the hands of Eric Adams because God has sent a plan to stop it. But because of their political pride and their own, I suppose, selfish ways, they're going to ignore the word of God and allow the shootings to continue. But I'm telling you, we can bring these men out to prison and they can stop the shooting. Lord, I offer this prayer to every ear that, have, that, that will hear what I've just said. And I pray that there'll be people who will come to help me implement the Joseph Project. In your name, Jesus, I pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. When you see